and a three, and a two, and a one. Hey there everybody, Sensei Lex here. Today I am absolutely honored to be joined by two wonderful content creators from over at MTG The Stack. If you have not checked out their content, you need to do so immediately. Calvin and Adrian, they both hail from Detroit. They are two badass, amazing individuals, and it is an absolute pleasure to have them in the dojo today, hanging out on the road tour. And as always, I am joined by my magnificent, the fantastic, my co-host, Sloan. How are we doing today? How are we feeling? Is that us? Because we're vibing. That's, That's you. you. Yeah. That's we you. Can't, we can't uh, live up to what you just said. There's a lot of nice things you said about us, and none of them are true. Like the location and logistics were true, but like the message, not so much. Hey, I, I have a measure of confidence. <laughs> what you guys are doing, really, it, it's spectacular. And I don't say that lightly. I'm not just trying to kiss ass. Your content is, is really great. Um, I was subscribed to you initially, not to toot my own horn, I do this in every episode, I was subscribed to you early, but it's it's true, I'm, I'm on to a lot of these content creators. When your channel was called Neon Mushroom, uh, back back in the good old days, ye old days of YouTube, you guys have been grinding this for about 8 months now, 5,500 yeah. subscribers, I don't think people quite realize, 5,500 subs in about 8 months, you're kicking ass. Like That's, that's big shit. That's really that's good. That's big, that's big. Well thanks guys. Yeah, I think it's uh, just a, people like gameplay footage. Oh, mm -hmm. I find myself looking for gameplay footage, and you guys probably already know it's a little hard to produce, so mm -hmm. I think that's helped. Just people yeah. looking for gameplay footage, and we make it. Bam. No, yeah, gameplay it. is, is tricky to produce, for sure. I'm, I'm just oh starting gosh. to get into that realm more so. And man, it's it's a mess trying to get things set up. But when you get it going, you know, it works really well. And people's responses are generally really positive. But as far as you guys go, just uh, looking at my notes here a little bit, got to take the cheat card and use it sometimes. You guys mentioned in pre-show that you have two favorite cards that are both particularly interesting and they're very different at the same time. So Adrian, I'll start with you. You said that you're uh, more of a trickery charm man. I've been waiting for this moment. I've wanted to do a 35 minute video essay on this card and I have reasons. So this requires a, a couple qualifiers. One, I, I don't only play Commander. So this is my favorite card in Commander right now. Um, but that's the one qualifier. The other one is that it's for a specific reason and I play, I'm a Yuriko the Tiger Shadow main because mm. uh, <laughs> that card's easy. Magic's easy when you're playing Yuriko. Play 27 lands, no problem. Trickery Charm lets you do everything. <laughs> Every single mode is good, and it costs one blue mana, and it's always good. And I would play four if I could. You know what that card does? You want to read that card to you? Yeah, please, please. Okay. Trickery Charm is one blue mana, instant speed. And it says, choose one. Target creature you control becomes another target creature. Like, it changes the typing. It might even make it everything. The point is, is you make it a ninja. The other one says target creature gains flying, and the other one lets you rearrange the top four cards of your library. Mm. So it Ooh. gives Yuriko Evasion. It gives your not ninja one one a ninja. It makes it a ninja, and then it lets you rearrange the top four cards. So it's kind of like a scroll rack senses defining top esque ability. I love it, and that, that's that. That was the micro. Love version. It. That's the micro version. I had to contain myself. I had lived through <laughs> the true thirty five minute rant at least. <laughs> uh, this, so. Cards guess. <laughs> Only in Yuriko oh, and Orvar, but we'll talk about that another time. <laughs> <laughs> no, as, as if Yuriko needed any more tools at her disposal. Uh, Yuriko decks typically are very degenerate. <laughs> They're very powerful, very yes. fast. You know, I've uh, I've had some crazy plays, you know, enacted upon me by Yuriko players. Uh, I have nightmares sometimes about ninjas coming out and just cutting me down <laughs> but as for you calvin you said you're more of a uh, ruinous ultimatum fan tell me why you love that card so much um the very first reason that i love ruinous ultimatum is if you look at the mana cost um there's a lot of colors and most of it's white i'm gonna be perfectly honest um but no i i'm a slow grindy control player the tap out kind i want to put up big walls and i want to make sure you have no stuff um, in Garuk's Wake was printed a long time ago and like mm. it almost tickled my fancy but it's way too high in that mana cost right um, but in Commander 7 is more or less reasonable to obtain and this Ruinous Ultimate lets me play any kind of deck and even even against Adrian's deck or anything else on the channel that we see it, everything else is gone 
You're I such a that. bully. I, That's so mean. <laughs> it's the fairest kind of mean. Yeah. It, it, it is upfront and honest. That's true. That's um. fair. I was going to say, as a Stax player, a very, very avid Stax player, Boo. that is the fairest version. Why are you always hate? Because Why are you always hate? I have to. I There's have to nothing su- wrong with. I stacks. have to support the Timmys out there. Okay, Timmys. Timmys hate stacks. Stasis this is pretty sweet, right, guys? Oh man, you guys <laughs> love me a stasis. stasis. Yeah. How about Winter Orb? That's my favorite. That. Winter <laughs> Orb. Shout out to That's Urza. My favorite. I don't leave home without him. I bet. But I was gonna say the the uh, ruinous ultimatum is one of those cards that. Unlike uh, unlike something along the veins of the stasis, the winter orb, the static orb, it is something that is very upfront, and people don't expect it, considering its high level of pip, and that many different individualized pips with no colorless in it and its casting cost. Because if I am correct, it is two red, three white, two black to yep. cast. Correct. Yep. Which is and awful, that's just because that means you need three white sources. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, and so people that. people don't see that coming. And when you when you fire that off, it's like, I let that happen. Shit! <laughs> like there's no there's no going back from it. Once it's done, it's done. You can't well, counter that. You gotta give it to him. The the rune is ultimatum. You can't use um, the CG who shelters all to cast it. You can't. That's pretty great. You just, that, that is true. pretty great. <laughs> But yeah. you're playing the Planeswalker deck, and you just make sure you have uh, three mana Teferi in play. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair, balanced magic. Oh, yeah, because, you know, it's Teferi is known magic. for being fair and balanced. That's that's what he does. He's the, co- the king of fair and balanced. You heard it here first on the dojo. Teferi is fair. You can actually quote <laughs> Neon Mushroom on that. Hey, <laughs> so, I gotta, well, I gotta well, ask the the name Neon Mushroom. What what gave you guys the idea for for naming the channel that initially? It's not that anymore, but initially. Oh man. Yeah. Okay, so when I first started the channel, um, the idea was like kind of I used to do other stuff on YouTube that has nothing to do with Magic at all, and um, I was like, why don't I try to do Magic stuff? Because I've been playing Magic since I was like, you got me into Magic. I did back right out of high school. It was me right in the beginning of college. I am the reason. Yeah, he I, is. It was my fault. <laughs> and um. And so I wanted to do it, but I didn't know what to name it. Um, so I just took a few of my favorite, like, aesthetic words. I like big, bright neon lights, and I'm a big uh, Nintendo fan. Mario eats mushrooms because he trips hard. Hell yeah, And um, I put those words together. But that, <laughs> that was when it was just me, and it didn't make sense to leave that the name because now it's not just me. It's me and him, and we have a huge group of people that help us. You know, they play the games with us and stuff. So it felt yeah. weird to leave it under my moniker, if that makes sense. No, yeah, it's that, smart. That was one it's of the smart. That was one of the big reasons for the change. It, yeah. You are now Neon Mushroom, yeah. just like I'm Trigger, but the right. channel is its own distinct, bigger thing right now. Yeah. Words. That's awesome. And stuff. You're correct. Um, no, we can, We I totally understand. That is, that is super, super awesome to be able to create one brand and then turn that brand into one individualized person and then be able to continue from that same following into a whole new conglomerate that is not only... Again, if you haven't gone over and checked it out already, get your ass over there. MTG the stack. The stack. That's that good. Good. Stack. First of all, those if you haven't seen their thumbnails yet, it's all neon. It's some good shit. It hits the eyes just right. You look at it and you feel like you're in Vegas. You're it's like, visually Lord, appealing, baby. Big. Come on. Visually nice. appealing. This is the but, first time I've ever heard nice things about that from not you. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, neon's neon's cool. But yeah, you, who doesn't like neon? If you get your no, who who in this world doesn't like neon? But to be able to kind of like take that whole that whole thing and instead of having to scrap your entire channel and basically rebuild from ground zero is fantastic. That is absolutely amazing. So we do applaud you on being able to do that because that's not easy. Well, thanks, man. man. That is not easy. Appreciate that. We just been we've been like playing it by ear the whole time, so. Lucky, <laughs> softly. Yeah, softly. Because yeah. you mentioned that you did other YouTube stuff. Before yeah, I guess we yeah. we've both done other stuff before this. But yeah. Not none of the stuff we've done before had been as successful as MTG this back as right. Neon Mushroom, but we we weren't necessarily like leaving it all the chance. We ha- we had some experience. Yeah, we made enough mistakes before. Yeah, to avoid some of the that's obvious good. ones. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. Get a nice, get an, an opportunity to learn and grow from that. Um, yeah, it, it, it's difficult. I, I myself had a hiatus from my channel for a while. I took about a two-year break, which for most people, 
they would probably just quit YouTube altogether. But once I got everything back together in the way that I wanted it to be, you know, it feels really nice to be back in this sphere and being yeah. engaging more with the community and being a part of these things. That, you know, that was a big reason for this this podcast in general. This was a, a dream my brother Sloan and I have had for a while now, for years, just scheming like what we would want to do. And eventually we settled on, you just turn on the camera and talk to people. Just gather with people and have fun. You know, there's there's so many much smarter, better Magic players out there who, you know, former Pro Tour winners and things like that who have their podcasts about how to be the best in particular formats and how to kick right. ass at Magic. That's that's not really us. You know, we can hold our own at a, at a commander table, but, you know, we're not there to be Pro Tour grinders. We're not, you know, CEDH innovators. You have a lot of people like that out there who are designing these incredibly unique and mechanically powerful decks. Yeah. And we can come up with some cool stuff, but that's not really our vibe or our lane. And so it made more sense to have kind of a... Because I hear that all the time on social media. The Magic community is the most inclusive, open community. And then when I look around, I see a lot of people who are kind of... And this doesn't mean to be disrespectful or hurtful to anyone. So please, other content creators who might be listening to this, don't take it that way. But um, I see a lot of people who are kind of in their own bubbles. And they only associate with certain yeah. people who maybe are on their level or who, you know, they deign to think this person could benefit my channel in some way. And I wanted to avoid that and kind of take that barrier down and just reach out to people and be like, hey, let's just let's just have a conversation. Real quick, I, I, you did, I think you want to say something too, but I just wanted to, while, while we're still on the tail of you talking about leaving YouTube for two years, mm -hmm. I, I found this out last week. You actually uh, put me on the Eureka pretty hard without knowing it. I don't know if it's if it's taboo to say your old channel name. On no, this channel, no not at all. Builder Society. Yeah, I watched your hundred dollar Eureka build uh, oh, a while awesome. ago. I I just found out this week that you're the same people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that did that. The, yeah, yeah. So, um, before the two year hiatus, before the before time. Yeah, that that video I was more popular than I thought it would be. And now when I look back on it, I'm like I should have spent a lot more time on this. I wasn't expecting it to get a decent amount of views and and have people respond to it as positively as they did um and so it kind of it i i like it and, and i appreciate you saying that you know i'm um i love it anytime somebody's like i built something of yours and i had a lot of fun with it or i play tested a thing and you know it felt really good and it was nice it was cheap and really efficient oh, excuse me get yeah, bourbon over here but I, I i i do really appreciate that um, and oh, for sure, man. Yeah, it, it, the the biggest thing that I would say, you know, and I want to throw it over to Sloan to get his view on this is, I I I think a lot of us interact with a lot of different content creators, and that was one thing I identified. And I don't know how to quite put this. It's not necessarily a scientific, provable thing, but your channel has a very good vibe to it. It's very relaxed. The atmosphere of the videos is really good. It's the kind of content that you can really just kick back and relax. You've had a long day, work stressful, life stressful, whatever. It's the kind of thing you can just turn on and just kind of float away for a little while. Um, and that's something that I really appreciate about the stuff that you guys are making. Well, thank you. I'm glad it's received that way. It looks like we uh, we edit out all the petty stuff for the most part. So I'm glad we've successfully uh, hidden that from the world. It just leaves the good parts. Just yeah. Yeah. Well, see, like, and that's and that's a big thing that that uh, Lex and I talk about a lot is especially when we're kind of scheming who we want to bring on, uh, where we want to go next with the podcast. Um, you know, when we're making our list of our guests and everything like that, and setting dates, and like, okay, we're gonna have this guest on this day, we're gonna have this guest here, we're gonna have this guest here. Our biggest thing is we we try as hard as we can to not look at well, this is going to get us here. This is going to get us here. Like, we don't worry about any of that. We don't care. We don't care if five people watch. We don't care if five million people watch, which, wow, holy shit, right? Five million. Yeah. It would never anything. happen, but, you know, I mean, dream. <laughs> yeah. I mean, amazing. But we don't care. We honestly do not worry about what's what anything can come from it. What we worry about is giving the big opportunity, and I kind of I kind of – mentioned and touched on this pre-show um we are all about um, we're a magic the gathering you know podcast we're a magic the gathering channel as are you guys you're a magic the gathering channel at the end of the day that's all any of us are talking about from command zone all the way down to uh you know commander social they're a pot another podcast if you guys haven't checked them out you should check them out they're they're a couple of cool guys 
Um, Sweet. But it does. It doesn't matter. No matter what, we're all talking about that. But Alex and I really, really, really try to focus on the gathering because we realize that a lot of the content that's out there and a lot of the creation that's out there talks about deck text. You know, you're talking about synergies, you're talking about combos, you're talking about archetypes, you're talking about new spoilers, you're talking about Watsi's decision, you're talking about secret layer drops. But how often are people really just talking about the community? How often are people really just talking about what it means to gather, what it means to be a part of this community and what the overall umbrella is and what the, the, the whole theme of the game is. Because this was something that was intended to sit down with your friends and play. And we live in a day and an age where you, I can go click on my destiny right now and I can be surrounded by, you know, 5,000 people. At any given time, I can be playing Elder Scrolls Online and there's tens of thousands of people. But it doesn't mean I know them. It doesn't mean I actually talk to them. I'm just walking right by them. And you don't even think about it, you know? You're playing a little Call of Duty. But this is something that's so unique and it's and especially Commander because it's that four player pod, that interaction where it is four individual human beings bringing whatever, whatever preconceived notion of who they are gets to get left at the door. They sit down with a deck and you create a bond right then and there, boom. Even if you don't know those three people, you will by the end of that game because you have an opportunity. And so when we see channels like your guys's, when we see like, like that vibe of like, these are real down to earth dudes. These are solid people. These are good human beings who genuinely enjoy the game and genuinely enjoy what they do. They love what they do. They're passionate because it comes through in your content. You guys might not realize it because you're sitting on the inside grinding hours and hours and hours of gameplay and hours and hours and hours of editing, which people don't really understand what goes behind the content creation. But it's not like you sat down, recorded it and 20 minutes later, like, do, do, do. all right, here we go. Slap yeah, a thumbnail together. No, no, no. You, you guys know that's spent, not how it works. No, no, you spent 25 hours on that one video. You spent six hours on that yeah, one I, I don't make you content know. on the on the level that you guys do um in terms of gameplay i can only imagine how long does your average video take to make from start to to finish so including your recording time? including your recording including recording yeah. that does increase the time quite a bit it might be worth mentioning like how long it used to take it does yeah there's a it's different because we've got a lot of reps and when, mm -hmm. when we first started um, I remember November, uh, both Trigger and I sat down and said, we're both going to put out two videos a week. So four videos a week between the two of us, mm -hmm. uh, just gameplay. And we were losing sleep because it would take like anywhere between 20 and 35 hours to produce a single game. Um, mm -hmm. And when we're both doing that twice a week, it's like, we're going to sleep. So, um, now, so and you guys have jobs like, yeah, outside of that, correct? You're working full time now. I'm um, not anymore. Some behind, behind the scenes yeah. stuff? Yeah, yeah, we can get, yeah. get behind the curtain types yeah. shit, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, over the last like uh, couple of months, uh, Adrian's been doing most of the editing. Yeah. Um, since yeah. then, your reps have gotten, you've gotten tired. I can turn over a video in a day. So like if we record a video, I can, if we record a video in the morning, which we don't, but if we did, I could have it done by dinner time. Um, but yeah. that just took like doing it 75 times. Yeah. You know, if anyone, I wish more people did this, but I get why people try it and don't. And I have no shade for those people because I get it. Like it's really yeah. easy to want to be like, eh, I just won't. But it's yeah. also so much fun, so maybe more people should try it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, and that's where that's where we feel like the community is kind of missing. That's people aren't really getting an opportunity to hear from the guys behind the camera or the girls or the girls. You know, let's be fair to everybody, guys and gals behind the camera and the people that put in the work, put in the effort. All you see is a video, you watch it, you watch a gameplay and you hear the, all right, if you, you know, thanks for watching to the very end, like and subscribe and then boop, you exit out and go on to the next one, you know? Right. And it's like that person put everything they had into that. And that was the vibe we got from you guys. And we watching your guys' video, watching your guys' content, Lex sent it over to me, said, all right, this is going to be our next guest. This is going to be the next guest we have on, check them out. I sat down and I started watching your videos and I was like, these guys get it, man. These guys do hard work. These guys care about this. They care about their content. They care about the community and they care about the channel. This is this is what we're all about. This is our vibe. So big shout out to you guys. I'm gonna give you the round of applause here. Well, thanks guys. That's a big that's, round right there. That's, that's a big round. Sweet. That's so hilarious. so now we have, a, uh, we have a segment of this show we like to call the Magic Minute. So those of you who are familiar oh, yeah. with it know we have an amazing jingle that my brother Sloan has helped me make that I'm gonna insert right over here because I'm the editor so I have the power to do that.
It's a magic minute. Eh? For this segment, we like to go around the virtual room here and see what's going on in everybody's world of magic. For those of you who might not be familiar, new cards people are putting in their decks, new strategies they might be testing out, interesting gameplay experiences they've had, maybe some spoilers from upcoming sets that they're looking forward to or excited about. Maybe they got a new custom card in the mail or got some interesting new bling to pimp out a deck with. So, Sloan, as always, let's start with you. What's going on in your world of magic? All right, so for my magic minute, I am actually I'm actually pretty stagnant right now with the uh, with any new deck building, new cards, anything like that. Um, I did, uh, as you'll see on the last podcast, talk about getting a box of Commander Legends and opening that, and, and got some sweet pulls there. So I'm kind of just sitting on that box right now. I'm still kind of deciding what's going where. Um, I had also in a previous podcast talked about a Verena the Lich Queen deck that I am considering building. I think that's where we're going. And I think I'm so really, really dialing into that. I think that's the direction I'm going to head with a new build. And I'll grab some of those Commander Legends pieces and put those in. And then I'm also going to do the uh, the Wife Chosen deck where I set down all of the new partner commanders that I pulled and just put them face down and have her choose two. Bada boom, bada bing. That's the deck I have to build. Even if they have no synergy. Oh, it's going to be a fun. It's going to be get a fun and challenge. Minute, it'll be great. Yeah. I didn't pull either of them. Oh, oh, unfortunate. No. Wouldn't that be great? If I did, I'd be, be like, oh, no, now I have to build this deck. <laughs> guess I'll, guess I'll build, yeah. build farm. I don't know. Up, update <laughs> us on that partner deck whenever uh, the pieces start to uh, come together and you get it figured out. But as for you, Absolutely. Adrian and Calvin, what's going on in your guys' magic worlds? You first, me first. Rock, paper, scissors. Uh, card game? <laughs> card game. I'll go first. <laughs> um, okay, so can I use the future? Because I have something coming up and yeah. that's magical for me. Absolutely. This Friday, the new set, Time Spiral Remaster, comes out. And I am not a foils guy. I am, however, an old border guy. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of cards in the old border that I play in various commander decks. So we're actually going to live stream it, but I wouldn't recommend coming to it because it's mostly just going to be a self-serving thing for me. But I'm just going to whip out all my commander decks, and as I open this box, I'm going to replace new border cards with old border cards in my Ooh. commander decks, and it's going to be awesome. I love it. It's going to be so much fun. He's been excited yeah. about this for weeks. Weeks. I love it. At this point, uh, he talks about it more than uh, Trickery Charm. Yeah, but that's because Trickery Charm is eternal, and this is just the hotness for the week. <laughs> this is the new fling. A tr trickery Charm is wiped. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She doesn't know what hurt her. I shouldn't say that, but I did. It's okay. Welcome to MDG the Stack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what about you, Calvin? Oh, What's been goodness. going on for you? I have decided to make the switch. Uh, they, everyone yelled at me oh, when yeah. Cal Time came out, and I couldn't do it before because um, I am a bloody spike. And I know that Golos is a good commander. I know he uh, solves all my problems whenever I, do, I you know, have mana issues. Um, it doesn't matter what lands I draw into. Uh, he fixes it once I get to five. But I have switched my Planeswalker deck commander from Golos to Essica. Nice. Or more appropriately, the uh, Prismatic Bridge on the yep. top side. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, which I think there's a little bit of context left out. If you were to like say what your main deck is, it would be Golos Super Friends. Mm -hmm. But now it's not Golos Super Friends, it's the Prismatic Bridge Super Friends, which is way better because it's thematic and nice. It's thematic, uh, yeah, that, there's that. Um, but also, you know, I part of it is over this last week, I've been a little, little sleep deprived, so that might have been the what helped push me over the edge in making this decision. But I <laughs> fell in love with the idea of uh, with Golos in order to actually, you know, get more planes walkers out of him, you got to commit five mana, then you got the turn has no table, mm -hmm. and then you, you have to commit live. seven mana. Yep. Um, but you get the ancient tomb of Golos anyway, so it always works. It, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like Golos ha has a big target on his head and he dies to an Embrace, mm -hmm. right? Um, True. So you can't actually play the Golos version of the deck expecting the, the the round to go. Yeah, he dies to everything. At least he's an artifact. Yeah, Go Golos <laughs> is that uh, Kalia, Kalia, sorry if I butchered her name, style commander. It's kill on yeah. sight. You can't let it you sit at the table for a turn cycle or you know like bad, bad well, things are going to happen. That's that's the trap, right? Because after you kill the Golos, the Golos player went to get an Ancient Tomb, which pays for its next commander tax. <laughs> even, if the, even if the Golos player doesn't get an Ancient Tomb, all they gotta do is hit a land drop, right? and they bad. still get, get to cast it again. Um, and so you, I played the uh, Golos version of the Walker deck with that loop in mind, 
the prismatic bridge version, you want the you want it to come to your untap step, right? Mm -hmm. Because if it does, you only commit the five mana. You only commit seven after that. It, it just works. Um, it's harder on the mana uh, early on because there's no there is no like mana base that'll make it easier to cast. Golos gets ancient tomb. Um, right. The bridge doesn't even get interplanar beacon. But just all the changes from there that just sort of cascade from I want my commander to live, but yeah. it's super easy to it, it, it dodges most like common rule. It doesn't die to a braid. Right. Most people don't uh, play enchantment hate. Not de not designated. Not no, it'll die to a force of vigor, but yeah, you know, it'll die so incidentally to cards that yeah. exist for artifacts. Right. But, um, yeah. It, and from there, you know, since I'm expecting it to live, I get to add cards like Deflecting Swat and Fierce yeah. Guardian Shaft. <laughs> I get to play the free spells. I like uh, it. But before, you know, I had to expect the Golos to die, so I didn't get to. And I'm, I'm just so excited <laughs> for all of this. I have bought maybe 30 cards for this change. Oh, and wow. I, nice. Oh, wow. Yeah, sleep, sleep, awesome. sleep deprivation will motivate you to do all sorts of crazy things. I've been there myself. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> time to go clean out the sleep. garage now or whatever <laughs> crazy task you got going on. <laughs> <laughs> I should be Don't asleep, but instead I'm productive. <laughs> yeah, that that will last. That lasts me a good like uh, two nights with that energy, and then you know this morning I woke up and went to work and it was the groggiest mess ever. Oof. That's what you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm excited for Etika. I like it. Yeah, so yeah, I love it. Love it. No, as for main topics today. Today we're focusing a kind of a broad topic, but I think it's important to talk about. Um, all of us have been playing Magic now for a little while, and you learn things as you play over time, as you do with basically anything in life. But today I wanted to talk more of a social topic to do around the commander table, which is etiquette in commander. So this is an important thing, you know, one of those things that goes unspoken a lot of times is certain behaviors, both positive and negative, that people might exhibit or that we ourselves might have exhibited at one point or maybe currently do, that we could improve upon or that we could instill to others and help them be more approachable and frankly more fun to play with around the table. Commander, as we all well know, is a social, it's not necessarily casual format as much anymore, but a social format where people are generally supposed to care about the play experience of others around the table. So, I'd like to start things off with Calvin today and ask you and see what are some behaviors around the on the table around the table. Let's start with some positive behaviors and start off with good news, not necessarily the bad news. Just uh, anything you can think of off the top of your head that you would say that you yourself have exhibited or seen in other people that you really liked and went, "Man, I I respect that. I want to do a little more of that." I know this is a chance to throw me under the bus, but don't. You're the one that gave me the, the nastiest look earlier. That's I'm true. expecting you to say something terrible. Not, I won't. Um, but no, he said something positive first. And um, part of this comes out a lot in our recent games because we're under the camera. Um, yeah. we're, we're trying to keep up a positive attitude there. But something I've just been enjoying is if, if someone else goes off, they have their, their winning combo happen or they get the, the lucky play, what have you. Instead of, say, me being upset that, say, in the future, like, someone gets to kill my bridge mm -hmm. uh, because they want to counter war and it's with some cheeky card I didn't expect. Like, I, I just get to be excited for them because I know yeah. from, from their side of the table, like, that, that that's an important move. They had to have that happen. Yeah. yeah, which is also kind of a side effect of making the content, too, because you're forced <laughs> to look back through the game and then, like, you realize from their perspective, this was sick. It, and, and now everyone gets to see how sick it was. And then you get to see how sick it was after the fact. And then mm. you can only do that so much before you start to get stoked every time does, someone does something awesome. Yeah, right? and, but yeah. it's not just something that happens because we do content. Right. This is happening. The, the possibility for this to happen happens all the time when right. you just play with your friends. And it's so uh -huh. easy to get caught up in your own bubble of, well, gosh darn it, I wanted my commander to win. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get all my planes watered. I wanted to grind the game to a halt. But like, That's right, if, <laughs> sometimes it's just fun to emotionally win with your friend, you know? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Good. Um, like command. winning vicariously through your friend. In Commander. In, in, in Commander. Yeah. <laughs> Only in Commander. <laughs> Only in Commander. <laughs> yeah, no, it's the classic uh, let people enjoy things. Um, just yeah. give, letting somebody else 
have their moment and not taking it from them and, and deflating them at, at those uh, those big times. But what about for you, Adrian? Yeah. What's something you could think of that's positive that you that you like to do yourself or something you've maybe taken from somebody else that's helped you be a more positive force at the magic table? Calvin took a really good one. That was a really good one, and I don't think I can top it. But um, this is this is kind of on etiquette. Um, it's less heartwarming and nice, like enjoying watching your friends play magic and it work well, and enjoying that with them. But um, and maybe this was bred from just making content. Little uh, little information: we I haven't played Commander off of camera um, since we started this, so I kind of forgot how nice it is to just play for fun. And I want to. I'm gonna. I'm in your guys' Discord. We need to get some spell table games going. Yes, stat, we do. Just for fun. Yes, yes. Um, but one thing that's re I've really enjoyed just from playing a lot of Commander, specifically when we're trying to pick it up on camera, is um, people are getting like a lot better about patiently waiting for priority to pass to them. This is a little bit more yeah. cold and more analytical. But um, when you realize when Adrian's doing an edit and he screams at all his friends because he realized people didn't do the priority thing right and now they are it's just it makes the games a lot cleaner and that also yeah. will start to translate outside of the context of recording games because when three people have force of negation they can only cast them <laughs> in a certain order right so I guess that's kind of ambiguous and vague but um, when everyone understands how the game's mechanics work and they agree to do things in the correct order the game goes smoothly and then the punchline is you can play more magic so I much more magic, it. right? Yeah, I love it. It's very true. Yeah, you're not thinking for ten minutes about a tutor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's always fun. Right. You you get those moments where people are spending. I I was recognizing this in a gameplay edit I was doing earlier today. I was like, oh, I was playing too slow at the table. I was being that guy who's spending five yeah. minutes trying to decide what spell I'm gonna discard or whatever, and just like, mm -hmm. just, I, I was, I could see like, I, in the moment playing the game, I didn't see it, but looking back on the game, I was like, they probably were kind of annoyed with me because I'm just sitting there like debating, <laughs> hmm. and you then know. I end up discarding like a land or something trivial. So they're like, why? Why did it take yeah. you five minutes to discard a land, bro? Like, just make up your mind. <laughs> That's what I should have said in the first place, actually. Um, the one thing that we kind of fell into because of, like you were saying, sometimes like a decision's hard, right? Sometimes like you're not taking a long time to spite all of your friends that you're playing with. Sometimes you just want to like play right. But sometimes yeah. you just make a favorite play, favorite right? Play. Favorite play. Yeah. That's something we'll say when a recording session is taking too long. It's like, obviously you can't find the protean Hulk loop. It's probably there, but we know it's going to take 10 minutes to figure it out exactly. So just make your favorite play so we can play more commander. So yeah. I like that too. Yeah. Like sometimes you just make a play that's the coolest, not necessarily the best. Yeah. That's, all yeah. Like you more. that's a great point. What, yeah, a, what about for you, Sloan? What's some uh, positive behaviors you've seen around the table that you want to bring to more people? Real quick before I go, Calvin, you you look like you wanted to jump on the end of that uh, that protean that protean hole kind of let let it let's hit the biggest play. What were you gonna say? All I wanted to say was so unfortunate that we never get into a, one of our videos the favorite play part. Yeah, I always like, cut this up. Maybe we shouldn't cut those up. It, it comes up every time we play games, every, every recording yeah. session. It's at this point in house, it's like our catchphrase. Yeah, it just this is the first time it's gonna be heard online. Yep. Yeah, this is the place we never said that before actually. Yeah. Mm. Cool. You heard it here first. You heard exclusive. Heard it here first. Uh, exclusive. <laughs> right here in the dojo. Make the favorite play. Um, for me personally, um, actually, I want to give a very specific shout out to an individual that I play with in my group, which you guys have heard on the podcast before, the Dread Horde. Um, I want to give a shout out, and it's not to exclude anybody else, because I, again, I play with a wonderful group of Magic players that are incredibly talented, and they are all very, very very good deck builders sadly one of our boys is gone right now he uh he just took off i want to do a quick little little send out to him he just took off to the uh pacific coast trail he starts in mexico basically right on the border of mexico slash california and he is hiking all the way for six straight months up to the basically the canadian border so uh jeremy i know you won't see this for a while buddy but you be safe you enjoy yourself 
if everyone can give a round of applause to Jeremy. Absolutely. Out there. Shout Six out Jeremy. Months of hiking. Good luck on your hike, it, buddy. Bro. Good luck on your hike. You got That's this, buddy. That's so cool. Oh, it's so cool, I man. I could never he, do that. Just... He, he's been saving money for years and packing up supplies and stuff like that, man, been mapping it out. And uh, he, he's been with our, he's been with the company that we all work for, actually. He's been working for them for, oh, shoot, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to completely fuck this up, but 14 years. And he just quit his job um, and did it right. Did it right, of course, you know, like a month's notice, let him know. But he quit his job, man, and this is it, bro. This is it, life-changing experience. So he's, he's on his way. Um, but wow. I want to give a huge shout out to Chris in our group. Um, Chris, absolutely incredible, incredible magic player. He is somebody who is very articulate. And what, one big thing that I've noticed from him and I admire, and I've tried to kind of absorb this from him, he does not give a shit if it's the right play or if he dies. If he can see that there is no other way, it has to be done that way. And I love that because a lot of the times it's hard to make that call. You know, it's hard to be the guy who's looking at a table, you know, it's your friends, you know, it's everyone's getting along kind of thing. And you know, you're about to do like a board wipe that's going to completely just wreck face, mm -hmm. but he will make that call and, and he'll stand by it too. And rather than be like, you know, an ass about it, he's always very, come on guys, you know, I had to. And I love that. I love that attitude. Too. it's just like because it instantly Cheeky. defuses yeah That's good yeah but it diffuses the situation immediately because all of us might be like super into it we're right about to go off you know and we're all sitting down heads down you know hitting that multi-shuffle getting it going man getting the twitch moving and then all of a sudden all right wrath of god and you're like oh shit <laughs> <laughs> and he's like outstanding he's like guys you know i had to do it and then we're like ah you're right but he has <laughs> approached every game since we very first started that way and created, he's put that predisposition in us that this is who he is and he is not coming from a place of malicious, just like any, any malicious intent. It is just, he is a good solid human being. So setting that precedent with your play group and setting a precedent with people that you play with that look, I'm, I'm going to make the right call. I'm going to make the call that I know is best for everybody because I, I'm looking out for the state of the board, but not only making that call, but standing by your call without having to be a jerk about it. Just being like, come on, man, you know, it's the obvious play. And even if it, the obvious play is to kill me, I, I try to live by that too. If it's obvious, kill me, get me off the table. If it is going to up your ante and up your success rate, don't, don't leave me on the table because you know, you, want to think i'm going to be like pissed i'm not gonna be mad I'll get me out of here if i'm gonna win <laughs> get me out man stop me because that's gonna make me feel better yeah. so chris big shout out to you no, that's all i got awesome. lex yeah no i i love i love it honestly i've i've had the no, drop in my notes excuse me sorry <laughs> but that's, i i've had who a, needs them? <laughs> i've had some great experiences with chris too shout out to our boy over there at the dread horde um and I, I agree with you entirely. I think your assessment there is very well put. That it, it's having confidence in your plays and what you do is important. Being able to say strategically, like, this was the right call. Uh, because sometimes, you know, people get really into spite plays and stuff. And that, that can happen a lot at commander tables. Where people make very weird judgment decisions because of games in the past. Or because of, you know, maybe they felt slighted by something you did. Blowing up one of their permanents or something. Yeah. And so then instead of reacting to plays in a way that's strategically right for the table. And for the environment. And for making a better gameplay experience for everyone. They act pretty much cowardly they just started throwing shit everywhere and maybe targeting your things unnecessarily um just because they're salty about something so i, I love that chris yeah. is not that way he's very he's very clear and even keel um and yep. more people every time anytime i play with people who are like that it's those are always the best gameplay experiences mm-hmm and not and again that's not to say that anybody else in my group isn't that way it's just chris tends to be the one who time and time and time and time and time again he is always going to make that call even if you've even if you've done that that shit to him and you've gone after him like he blew up something on your board and you're like i'm coming after you and then all of a sudden our other buddy jake is about to set up for a big turn it doesn't matter that you did that to chris he's going to turn and just focus on jake because jake is the threat 
And I, I just, I really admire that ability, man. That's because it's hard to do. Yeah. It is hard it to do. It can be. It's easy to make spy, spy plays. We try not yes. to, but I catch myself almost doing it. Usually someone's like, is that right? And I'm like, probably not. But I'm going to do it anyway. It's- yeah, see, I think we're all kind of guguilty of it. I mean, yeah, yeah at some it's point, fun. right? <laughs> Everyone falls victim to the spy play at some point. Yeah. Though I'm curious what uh, y'all think about this. Um, is when a match starts, uh, is it a spite play if, say, someone kills you like last game with a particular commander, and then this next game they're gonna they're playing the same commander but a different deck you're playing like maybe you're weak to it or whatever, and like you're just thinking ahead of time. Oh, I know what that commander is gonna that commander in that person's hand is gonna do to me. Is is that a spite play if I start like hosing that particular combo? No, I I don't I wouldn't I call that really, spite. No. No. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Are you oh. sure? Yeah. You called that swipe play. Yeah. Just, oh, wait. Okay, so I was trying to frame this so I was the good guy. <laughs> but I just realized you put speaking from my perspective. I might be speaking about someone with his Yuriko deck. <laughs> Not at all. Story. I'm sure it happened. Um, and I, I remember switching from, uh, I played a, I was a fast deck, and then I switched to a slower deck. Um, but you ha- were on Yuriko. You yeah. Know, his decisions independently. Yeah. Um, and that was the nature of the conversation at the table. Like, was oh. or was that not a spite play? Oh, I mean, I'm just spiteful of you. It has nothing to do with the game. Oh, okay. yeah. I just... <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but just to clarify, you know, if, if you're concerned about a particular commander in a particular player's hand, that's not spite to the player. That's just, no, no. That's, that's an no. interesting way to look yeah. at etiquette, though, right? Because, sure. like, when you're having the, the rule zero discussion, the uh, everyone sits down and talks about what power level are we playing at? At what point, like, I'm going to play this deck, Okay, you're gonna play that deck. Does that change my decision on what deck I'm gonna play, good or bad? Like, hey, if you're playing that deck, I shouldn't play this build because it's like, just by nature of what this build's doing, it's gonna kind of hose you, right? That's interesting because like, that's a blurry line. It is that rule zero discussion and like, at what point are you like either being spiteful or maybe just not being spiteful, just being like a good friend, just like, hey, if you're playing X deck. I'm not going to play my deck that has 16 copies of uh, uh, what's the name of that stupid artifact that hoses planeswalkers. Uh, Immortal you know, Sun. This, that's an extreme example, but you yeah. get what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah. Because that's an interesting piece of etiquette that happens before you even sit down to play. It doesn't really feel like a spike play when you choose a deck based on what's at the table. Um, I think we, I think we all kind of have to do that because yeah. you want to make sure that you're playing something that's on the correct power level, or if you know for a fact, so. Whenever I go to play Urza, my table is going to run something that is very, very efficient and very quick. Um, a lot of the times when I'm playing Urza, someone will bust out like a stack Zer. Because yeah. if they can lock me down before I can lock the table down, I'm host, man. I'm done. I'm done for. And then they can continue to get around it. Or, um, you know, somebody will play like a Kalia deck because they don't necessarily need their, their access to their mana after they can get a Kalia out and protected. So a lot of the time, you're not really making a spiteful decision. It seems like you're making a de- you're making a decision based on experience, you know, because the definition yeah. of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. So if you don't, you know, up the ante and you don't do something a little bit different going into that next game, and you you expect to like get your ass beat again, you're kind of you know you're kind of asking for it. But if you have the opportunity to change the narrative in the game by bringing out something a little bit different or something that might be stronger against that other archetype. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Cause you're just, you're just forcing them to play around it. And then you teach right. them at the same time. I think you both become better, better magic players at the end of the day and better commander players. Cause you have that opportunity to learn. Okay. If this is something that directly can beat me, how do I beat what's trying to beat me? You know, you're, you're unlocking that next level of the puzzle. Because every deck is like a puzzle, and how how am I going to get around this? How am I going to do this? At least that's how my mind works. Like I love yeah. trying to figure that puzzle out. That's why I love stacks because it's it's just a giant game within the game, and I have to figure out okay, how do I lock down the table without locking myself out? You know, I love that. Love that. Yeah, I would to add to that. I would say that your if you're going out of your way, say you have a friend who has a graveyard based deck and you're going out of your way to play your rest in peace tribal deck, that that's a spiteful yeah. move. Yeah, um, right. that's yeah. That that's that to me is spiteful. Um because commander there's this so-called social contract where we're supposed to 
not necessarily, you know, it's not about letting other people win or just rolling over or not playing to the best of your ability. It's more so just making sure that gameplay experiences are balanced and fun for everybody involved in the game. And I think if you if you go out of your way to pick a deck that you know is going to shut somebody off and prevent them from playing Magic at, at of any kind, and this is more so for casual or high power sort of games. CEDH is a whole different animal, but for more casual high power games, going out of your way to play things that prevent other people from playing Magic, I I would perceive that personally as spiteful. But I'm curious more so what you guys think about that. If that if that is spiteful or if that's just tactically smart, and that's the, the correct play. That's interesting. Um, I guess like context and intent is what matters there, because like yeah. then it becomes a weird game of like rock paper scissors, right? Like oh you're gonna play your stupid stacks deck. I'm gonna play my deck that's good against stacks. Oh, well, you're going to play your deck that's going to get stacks. I'll play my, you know, how many levels deep you're going to go before everyone finally settles on a deck yeah. to make yeah. sure that they have, like, the high ground. That doesn't make any sense. But, um, yeah. I, you said it really well. I think it's spiteful when your intent is, like, to cause that person who's picking that deck to have a bad play experience. Yeah. It becomes spiteful when, like, that's clearly the intent. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. We, we fell like down this rabbit hole a bit when, uh, when we put together pods whatnot. Yeah, uh, a little bit. A little bit ago, everyone would just pick decks on their own, and people would make decisions along the lines. Yeah, oh, it's a oh, trap you fall into. And then eventually, we started more or less hand picking the pods. Yep. Or, or we would like set up. Okay, you can, you two can pick a deck first, and then you two are gonna have that. That like me and Adrian will just play a deck that will make the game more dynamic with whatever our friends pick. Yeah, and unfortunately, think, okay. we don't play the decks we prefer to play all the time because I, I don't I yeah. rarely play planeswalkers. No. Um <laughs> but uh I think it's that the question of does this decision that's like on the line that's gray, does this decision make the game more or less dynamic? Um like your deck could have a strong matchup, say, against like your friend. Like like what's a good example of a deck that has a strong matchup against uh Yuriko? Um, a deck that has like any so a Laurel build specifically mm -hmm. Foley's Laurel build mm -hmm. can be very interesting because I'm not playing Thassa Consultation Yuriko I'm playing like I'm trying to flip over Temporal Trespass mm -hmm. um, so when I'm trying to count to eighty it's almost impossible <laughs> and yeah. if you pick your uh, your your, your Aloro deck with that intent I don't know I've been mean enough that maybe it's okay to do that though <laughs> <laughs> your, context your Yuriko deck even with the design of having to flip over the damage is. Mm -hmm pretty tuned yeah it's tu it's tuned to do the thing <laughs> so that might be a dynamic choice still yeah it, it doesn't mean you can just easily close out a game right however if someone picks say a commander that can just just turns off yuriko in some way or plays the deck someone that, plays their deck with like sorcerer sp spyglass and the command they, zone they, somehow. they explicitly pick the deck yeah. with the intent to immediately tutor up sorcerer spyglass or the equivalent uh get it down name yuriko yeah exactly like yeah. that doesn't make the game more dynamic. It doesn't make it interesting. It just makes me mad. It, it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you're not playing magic to interact with me and engage with me and have a good time with me. You're playing magic to be a dickhead to me, and that that yeah. That's that's a very distinct line. You know, I I understand making the tactical choice of like I'm you're I'm, you're playing your optimized deck. I'm gonna play my optimized deck. That's one thing. But being like, yeah. I'm going to completely shut you out of the game because I'm salty about something or whatever, instead of having that sort of behavior, what you need to do is be an adult and have a conversation with another person yeah, and be yeah. like, hey, let's clear it's the so air here. Sometimes, right? It's just so not... tempting. Don't do it. <laughs> so I think, I think that kind of actually, I think that leads us into the next, the next half the ugly half of this conversation which is because it seems like we've kind of already brushed across the top of it um but what what have you guys seen and uh again we'll, we'll start with you calvin we'll just keep the rotation the same here what what things have you seen at the commander table and this can be in the uh the pre the pre-19 as i like to call it the pre-19 days um, so like times. right right at the the before times right at uh, live tabletop or even over webcam games if you've picked any up that weren't necessarily just uh, just with the intention of streaming or anything like that um, what are things that you've seen at the table that might not full blown like be like I swear to God I'm gonna flip this table but things that just 
to get under your skin or things you've seen that are just in bad taste or they genuinely they genuinely just annoy you what is what is something you've seen here we play pretty high powered magic um, we play like decidedly not cedh but like face pressed up against that glass when we can get it yeah, there. The, mm-hmm. yeah. the, the most important point is we're we're not cedh we, yeah. we promise we, we we've found where that line is and we're going to get as close yeah. to it as possible yeah um we, we have very very optimized builds people are doing powerful things sometimes sometimes the guy just does get the sorcerer spyglass not the intent but it just happens yeah because of that we sometimes don't have the most balanced decks we're working on that still but but even off, off camera that's just how we like to play yeah we mm-hmm. like that high octane um back in the back in the pre-19 days back, back when like i had a commander deck when return to ravnica um there, there is a bit of a, at least of the group i played with a bit of a stigma of like that sort of like highly optimized magic Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But it, right, anything's okay, basically. Yeah. As yeah. long as you're not like CEDH, I suppose. The thing that grinds my gears, with that in mind, while I'm accepting that like any sort of deck is acceptable at the table, from stacks to hyper fast aggro, if you're a control player and you have moved to the end game, um, and you don't have a win condition plan, mm-hmm. so eight like, nickel. Yep. <laughs> I, I've I've done this sometimes. I've yeah. I've fallen into this sometimes, yeah. right? Like it, the game's understood as I've basically locked the the board down. I don't feel like it yet. I don't feel like I do this on purpose. Um but like I can't close out the game. The thing mm-hmm. that grinds my gears is can can this game end now that the control player has locked it down? Right. Yeah. Um, Cuz he wants the win con to be scoop yeah, you want to yeah. be able to end it. Yeah, that's actually it's a good, pretty good point because that's sometimes you want to be more considerate with your deck building decisions, and like sometimes it's more considerate to cut someone's throat than to like watch them suffocate. Very true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Harsh, but it is true. And so, it's it's sometimes not your fault too. Like sometimes you do have win conditions in mind, but like the fan X player. You know, milled your bullets to Citadel or your Aetherflux yeah. Reservoir. That happens. Sometimes things just happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, just, I, I guess at the deck building stage, just be, be considerate. Be, considerate. be able to close the game once you've Armageddon or whatever it is you're doing. And that's, that's why we like high powered games at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. That lets us play more of them. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, very true. Things go that route. Seeing all, all the decks that I build, I always I have learned. Over the course of uh, Lex and I playing for years and years, he has he has taken the time to pointedly hammer it into me, as a, if your deck has a win con, it needs three. You need three separate outlets, and that's kind of one of the tiers that I build on. Is I need three mm-hmm. separate ways to close the game out, and I should be able to describe them in detail what they are. I should know exactly what cards it takes, or and and or exactly what it takes to get there. So with each of my builds, I always have that in mind. Like with Urza, people are like, "So what's what's your what's your what's your win con?" And I'm like, "Well, my win con would be a Thassa's Oracle with a Basalt Monolith Strionic Resonator combo." So I go ahead, get into that, loop it over and over. And that's that's also my win con and Brago is Basalt Monolith with a Strionic Resonator. And then I'll just do infinite ETBs until I can draw my entire library. But that way I either go Thassa's Oracle or I go Lab Man. I put both in so that if I lose one, I get the other. Or a backup win con is Grand Architect Pili Pala in, in Urza. Infinite and then mana. you just yeah. Yeah, infinite blue mana. You cast Urza, you use the infinite mana to do all five, and then back into Thassa's Oracle. So it's like there's many outlets to get to my win con. Or I just will make the infinite mana, say you've gotten rid of it, then I'll blue sun Zena. Draw out, there you go, Thassa's Oracle. So there's always a way. There's always a way to win. But it's like, I'm not going to make you sit there and barrel. Now my Rurik Thar deck, my win con literally is just Timmy Magic. I'm just going to sit there and try and beat you down. Or I'm just going to watch you cast a bunch of spells and just damage the bejesus out of yourself. Yeah. And that's and that's my win con because that deck isn't made to really win. My deck that deck is just one that I play to have fun. I don't yeah. care what happens. But if and now if the table's getting to that point, then I have a big six six monster that I'm just gonna keep beating your ass with until it's <laughs> until it's GG. First sliver, it's slivers. You know, Edgar Markov, I'm swinging with a bunch of vampires. <laughs> that's it. That's actually the uh, the biggest drive for me to build Edgar Markov when it first launched out because I had the Planeswalker deck and if I built Edgar Markov as like as I saw it just making as many creature tokens as possible and doing white anthems, it'd be the complete opposite of my Planeswalker deck. Mm-hmm. So if someone were to scream at the 
table, but Adrian shouts at me to put away to fairy time raveler and like do something a bit more fun for us, please. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. I'll, sure. I'll, I'll play kill this. Kill you on turn four. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but even then, it I can only kill one person at a time. Right. At, like nor- in normal circumstances. Unless so. you draw your captivating vampire every game. Hey. <laughs> I approve. One hundred percent approved. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think oh, the thing so... that's important build build with an idea in mind, it, like a, a, an idea for how you're going to win in mind. I should say, um, I I've played with people in the past who are very adamant that scooping is a win condition. On a technical level, yes, you are correct. It is a win condition, but is it a is it a healthy goal? to look to achieve in a game that's supposed to be social and fun? Probably not. Uh, I, I, I put it on a similar level of equivalence with decks that take extra turns with no way to win. It's, I'm just going to, I, I have six extra turns. Okay, well you have two one one creatures on the battlefield that everybody can block. Do you have a combo? Well, maybe if I find it. Okay, you know, it, it's fine. You can do that. People do do it. But you end up in these awkward situations where people aren't really playing magic. They're not really having fun engaging with the game. They're on their phones. They're, you know, tuned out watching a TV or whatever. I hate that so much. Yeah. They're not even a part of the game because the decisions one player has made have made, have manifested that as a behavior that people need to do at the table to enjoy their night, you know? This is, it's just uh, so hard on the line to, I think for us to walk on because on one v one, like one on one magic or say sixty card magic, sixty yeah. card magic tournament magic. I, I I will happily play the deck that's a uh, five mana Teferi. Oh, um, where's Teferi? Yeah, or where's where's Nexus of Fate? Yeah, you know, the, yeah, those types yeah. of uh, constructed decks. Uh, Iden has talked to me about decks where the win condition is just I get uh, Teferi loops and emblems on, and all I'm going to do is start watch to... your opponent draw their deck. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. tuck my Teferi into the top of my library, which is mm-hmm. otherwise empty, and I'm going to watch you draw your whole deck. In, in competitive Magic, like I'm super okay with the win condition. Same. Yeah, no, yeah, of course. That's not why we're doing what we do here. But that that that's why it's a hard line to walk because people. Uh, say some of your friends that are in this group they, they do do other kinds of magic and that's mm-hmm. some of the magic that they enjoy um, it's interesting because we all come from a background of competitive magic mm-hmm. none of us started with commander N- none of us yeah we actually it's funny we all met playing magic which is really cool yeah that is really cool. that is awesome that is awesome so adrian what about you what do you got for us what is it that grinds your gears there are like a few things um, in a game of magic that'll kind of make me a little bit aggravated. There's not a whole lot people can do um, to like make me want to flip the table, you know? But um, everything from someone's like cadence, you ever get and you ever play against a specific someone um, and like the attitude they have throughout the entire game, regardless of whether they're ahead or behind, is just really standoffish. Mm. Um, man. Yep. <laughs> yep. Played against I, that. That's the worst thing ever. Um, but that's just like a personal, like, what's the word for it? Like a nuance that a person can have. But to be a little bit more mechanical, like in game, because again, you took a really, someone took a really good one talking about like not wrapping the game up, because um, that is really inconsiderate. But um, making it making a deck, Jora, the Weatherlight Captain, is a really good example of uh, decks that do this. But pe- people who like maybe aren't quite as experienced, so this isn't necessarily your fault if you do this. Um, but bear it in mind, no one wants to watch you solitaire for 30 minutes, only to have you pass the turn, having yeah. not changed your position within the game. I'm expecting to watch someone solitaire for 10 minutes and die. And I'm excited for that. That's a whole different thing, because I got to watch the Drogo player paradoxical outcome me to death, and it was sweet. Um, yeah. The issue is, is when someone... Solitaire your decks, guys. Like, before you bring your Drogo deck or whatever, or your Orvar deck to the uh, commander table, these are decks you can solitaire. So... Put your playmat out in a room alone and sit there and solitaire your deck. It's so much fun to do it anyway. Just do it anyway. Yeah. And, um, and learn your deck. I don't like it when people show up like unprepared to play a relatively complicated strategy and then make three people stare at you while you kind of sh- shit the bed. Yeah, definitely. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's that's awful. That's a that's a really really good pet peeve, and I I have definitely experienced that as well. That drives me insane. I've I've been at a. Uh, at an LGS, our, our biggest LGS here, 
and uh, we had a guy sit down in our pod and he was playing a Yassan the Wanderer Bard deck, but he had built it for full, he had built it for full CEDH and Yassan, um, even though I play a lot of blue, I've mentioned this before, like I started, my biggest color scheme that really made me fall in love with Commander was Selesnya. And I'm I'm still a huge green green mage. I love green. If I can if I could find better ways to splash it into the decks that I play, I would. But I just can't. It's not uh, it's not necessarily practical for what I play now. But right. that aside, Yasan is one of my pet cards. He's one of my absolute favorite cards. I will put him if a deck is green. You better know there's a Yasan in there. I will find a way to make him work. <laughs> but the CEDH primer for Yasan is very complicated. If you've ever seen the official CEDH primer for him, it's mm -hmm. close to 21, 25 pages. It is huge. Lex actually sent it to me when I wanted to build my very first high-powered CEDH deck, and I did wind up eventually building this deck. But the solitaire lines for this deck are very complicated. It is not a simple combo. You need six to eight cards to get it set up, and you it it is a ridiculously long combo. It's like a Rube Goldberg machine. It, yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It, it, it's so, very convoluted. Do you, I need to see Lex, this. Lex, real quick, can you explain the loop to him? So there's there's several, but primarily um, you're using small creatures like Scrib Ranger, um, so you can get you can get infinite untaps with Yasan. Um, you also use creatures like uh, Great Oak Guardian, that when they enter the battlefield, they untap all of your creatures. And you're using those with different untapper effects. So if you get a mana dork like, say, um, Priest of Titania, that makes a green for every elf on the battlefield, with a high enough density of elves and enough untappers, you can infinitely chain Yasan to tutor out tons of creatures and end it with crater hoof hitting the field and going crazy and smashing into everybody um but oh, it, oh, it's oh. it's convoluted in the sense that like if you've ever seen gitrog monster primers there's a lot yes, of there's I am familiar with those a lot of working pieces to make everything happen yeah. um you can assemble the pieces very quickly which is why they consider them to be competitive um, but it's also very brittle. You know, they're susceptible to targeted removal in certain ways. But once you get it going, you know, it, it's very hard to stop. It's a snowball that's rolling downhill. Um, I, I've mm -hmm. played against the Yasan deck many times locally. It's very, very, very good. Um, I included Cursed Totem into my Kest deck specifically for decks like that because it's, speaking of spike plays, I'm like, don't play certain cards. I'm like, I threw this card and it's not Here's despite him. <laughs> it's just because we're playing competitively and when you're playing more competitively, um, you have to make those tactical choices, you know, to counter your meta. So it's also why I run effects like Pyroclasm um, and things like that. Uh, Pyroclasm is two damage to every creature on the board, and Cursed Totem, for those who may not know, is creatures cannot activate their abilities. Uh, so it shuts yeah. off any mana dorks. It shuts off, you know, creatures like, to say, Weatherlight Captain or Najila. They can't activate their abilities anymore. Um, it's... Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a nasty card against the right decks. So things like that. But as for me little behaviors that I have seen that I don't I don't necessarily get into like like I think we've all covered a lot of great points and there's a lot of different things that I could talk about, but the primary one for me is sportsmanship. Um this was something I will readily admit I was really bad at. Uh, Sloan can attest to this. I was that kid who, if I didn't get my way in a video game, I lost. I've, I've always been pretty terrible at video games, but I, I would throw a controller or I'd stamp my feet and get really angry. Um, it was not good sportsmanship. It's not a good look. It, very immature behavior. And when I first started playing Magic, I quickly identified, like, first of all, you're an adult, so grow the fuck up. And secondly... Yeah. <laughs> you're playing with other people have some respect for other people at the table and understand that like you might be salty or petty that you lost a game but that's why you can just shuffle up and play again there's more games to be played this is not the last game you'll ever play there's no prizes on the line you know you didn't lose money or something because you lost the commander game it's just it's just a blow to your ego because you thought you would play better than you did and that's a personal problem that can be fixed you know it's not a big deal and so that's something i've noticed i've gotten much better at that now over the six years i've been playing commander where i, I make it a point after every game to 
reach out a hand and give people a fist bump and say GG. It's a small thing, but I've noticed like when, if you can tell that there's tension at the table, it's a way of deflating that because people immediately, like they might be mad at you or petty or maybe they're on cloud nine because they just kicked your ass or whatever. But as soon as they see your hand out, even if you lost, especially if you lost, people immediately go, oh, that's right. It's just a game. We'll play again. And it, right. it, it, it's, it's those little things that when you start doing these with people and engaging with people in these positive ways, it, it makes the, the experience of playing Commander more of a gathering and less so of a, of a bunch of egos clashing over cardboard. And that's something that I want to get even better at as I move forward and I get older and I play more games of Commander, really being somebody who's very positive to play Commander with. Um, and that's something for me, that's something I have to work at. You know, it's, it's, it's a choice. It's not necessarily this thing that comes naturally to me. Um, but yeah, that's, that's basically it for my point on that. Good sportsmanship is, and good sportsmanship, I think is something that's hard to, uh, it's hard to recognize when you're, when you, like, if you're the person doing it, because a lot of the time you don't even realize how frustrated you might be coming across, even if you're not that upset, it can just be like a look on your face or it can be a tone in your voice. Like, even if you're just a little upset, like, man, shit, I was so close. I had a great, I had a great turn coming up, you know, gosh, mm -hmm. dang it. But you, you don't even, you don't even recognize these things and it can be super, super easy. So if you're someone sitting at the table and you might have that inkling that it's you try to crack a smile or crack a joke or something. Cause it can, it can change the table dynamic almost instantly. Yeah. Stuff you know, can just, get lost just in that translation. Little. You know, you may not yeah. mean to be a dick, but sometimes you are. Yeah. yeah, and that's and that's exactly it. It's like you, you. Re I really don't think people mean to. I just think it happens sometimes. Yeah. Um. So I'd say I'd say for me though, my my biggest pet peeve, um, likes to touch on it like this: the phones and stuff. Please, please pay attention. Please put your phone down. You know, whatever it might be, just those little things for the game. Just we everyone's talked about it. Every content creator, we all kind of get that one. I would say my big thing is build a deck that you actually enjoy. And that's, that's a harder thing to acknowledge or see. But if you've ever been playing a game, so I'm going to give this, I'm going to pass this over to, to you guys, Adrian and Calvin. Have you ever been playing a game and someone says, I built this new deck, I saw this online, this commander got spoiled. But as they're playing the deck, you can legitimately see that they are not enjoying playing the deck, but they're only really doing it because it's high powered. Do, do you know what I'm talking about? It's a look in their eye. You don't you don't see your friend in there. You don't you see someone who's just basically going through the motions of playing a deck because they read a list online. I have, have you ever seen that before? This. Um, I haven't seen it happen. Um, it's not a regular thing, right? Because a lot of us, the reasons we play Commander are the nice thing about playing competitive magic in 60 card formats is you can get that out of your system doing mm -hmm. that. You can <laughs> yep. be a rude jerk and beat up on people who you could care less for. It, you're, oh, yes, <laughs> and it command fests or what is it? Grand Prix is what we used to call them. But that's not what you invited your three buddies over for. So it doesn't come right. up that often. But I will see it. There are sometimes when we first started to creep up the power level, mm -hmm. because the core group has always played, you know, we, we play standard, we play modern, we play competitive formats. We're used to it. But as we have new players coming in to just play commander with us, there's a little bit of that salt there because like I'm going to fierce guardianship you. I I'm going to, I'm going to do my free counter magic thing. It's mm -hmm. something we do. And um, because of that, in order to try to play catch up, sometimes people that are newer to our, uh, to our play group will go out and like try to get good by breeding a primer and bringing a deck that maybe doesn't reverberate with them very much. And um, this comes up rarely, but when it does come up, you're absolutely right. It, it's just like, what are you doing, man? Like, come come to the LGS with me. We'll play some actual, like, cutthroat magic later. That's not why we're here. Play something you like. <laughs> yep. You haven't done yes. if that's what you're thinking. Because um, you're, you're spiky as I am. But um, <laughs> that, yes, to answer your question from my perspective, yeah. If it's happened uh, recently and so far as the context of this. I wouldn't say recently. Like, within the last 365 days, yes. But days. it's gotten better since we started regular recording. 
if it's, if it's gotten better since regular recording, that means it's happened maybe a little bit. And the most I've ever seen is they're not playing catch up because they are spiky spikes. Yeah, they're they're playing catch up because we're spiky spikes because they're in a room full of people that are playing that that high octane magic where mm-hmm. you are going to fierce guardianship. Yeah. Um. And when it, like mm-hmm. when it comes to my baby deck, at least when it was the Golos version, I cut this card because it's in the world for the bridge. But I will drop a jewel lotus and I will not apologize for it. Um, Even though you should. No, I cut it. I cut it. Hi there. We're back. Sorry for the editing jump there. We had some uh, noise on my end of things that I had to correct. But back to our conversation here about etiquette. Uh, Both Calvin and Adrian have made some wonderful points tonight. Uh, Sloan as well. I hope I've made some good points. I don't know. You'll have to tell me in the comments. But this has been an absolutely wonderful experience having these guys on today. Um, it, it's it been great. I, I, I legitimately am extremely happy with people coming out and being supportive of this, especially other content creators. It's an awkward thing, it really is, to reach out to somebody you don't know and then have them be like, yeah, I'll be there and commit to a thing, a random thing with a person I don't know. And I appreciate each and every person who takes time out of their busy schedules. I know firsthand the content creator schedule it's it's busy busier than people might think there you're spending a lot of your time thinking about editing producing making content happen and appear on your phone or your tv or your laptop or wherever you're consuming content and i greatly appreciate anybody who takes time out of their days their free time whatever it is they're doing to come and spend some time here with sloan and i in the dojo it is greatly appreciated and you two it has been fantastic having you out tonight do you have any any final thoughts, anything you'd like to say, anything you'd like to pitch about yourselves or your channel uh, before we sign off here? Yeah, absolutely. Man, we didn't think about any shilling. No. Um, so we're, we're not actually emotionally prepared to yeah. uh, uh, do that for like ourselves on, yeah. somewhere else. Subscribe to the Commander Dojo. Yeah. Because this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate so this it. This is really fun. Anyone you. If Commander Dojo reaches out to you, you should come on this podcast. These guys are tight. You should see what they're like, the stuff they edit out. It's really good. That's the real stuff. <laughs> the juicy stuff. The, yeah, yeah. It's the juicy. I just, you guys don't know this, but I recorded the whole thing for personal use. Oh, sweet. That's oh, a lot of it. For legal reasons. <laughs> yeah, for legal reasons. We need you to sign an NDA. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll back up a minute. I'll see the <laughs> I'm contacting my lawyer immediately. So, <laughs> so we have to ask all right so if anybody's out there where can we find you guys what is the what is the exact spelling of the channel where are we find you what days are you playing when are you going live what do we got that we do have the information for um well we're different people so our handles are a little different if you find us here on youtube it's mtg like magic the gathering but abbreviated the stack it's all separate words um and then calvin you handle the socials for mtg the stack as far as twitter goes Right now, the Twitter uh, handle is mtg underscore stack. Yep. Uh, that's where you'll find us on Twitter. Um, I believe you have the Instagram, Adrian. Same thing for Instagram, mtg underscore the stack. MTG, the stack? The, the stack, yes. Okay. And oh, then um, okay. other than that, also, you, you're on YouTube. You do a thing on YouTube. Go find you. It's yeah. Trigger, T-T-R-G-R, all lowercase. Uh, find them. Uh, on YouTube, you can directly yell at me if you want. <laughs> Same thing on uh, Twitter. You can directly yell at me if you want. But <laughs> screw with them. Screw with them. If you're messing with him, <laughs> please don't. Make his day harder. <laughs> oh, make my day better. <laughs> um, what would you say uh, could be our consistent uh, upload videos? Uh, right now, we, we're trying to work towards a more consistent schedule, but uh, we started live streaming, which is a nightmare, <laughs> technically speaking, <laughs> which we do on Sundays. We, we can consistently tell you that we stream every Sunday at okay. a, a time. At a, <laughs> every Sunday, <laughs> youtube.com slash MTG is that. Uh, sleep. Yeah, and probably around noon Eastern time, but that varies. You pick the worst time. We're still like getting our legs for that, but there you go. That's all right. That's all right. We'll have as long as as long as people can jump over there, find it, get sub, get that notification bell hit, and of course, if you're listening to this and you aren't already sub to the Commander Dojo, do the same thing. What are you doing? You heard the man. You heard the man. Get that red button. 
it, we, just just no, push it, it. it it's no. a red button it wants you to press on it just do it and then hit the it little the you. little thumbs up like while you're over there or hit the down vote i it don't give a-, a shit just hit the buttons and help google love me <laughs> okay that's what we need to do but you heard it here first mtg the stack they have gameplay they stream they truly do it all they are connoisseurs of commander content on the internet and we greatly appreciate having them out tonight as for me and sloan here at the commander dojo we'd like to say thank you to you the viewers thank you for tuning in thank you for the support thank you for the wonderful comments keep them coming Uh, it always makes my heart flutter when i get a notification that somebody said something positive about me a little ego there for you but as always (laughs) you guys know the drill stay happy Stay safe, and we will see you next time. Peace. Konnichiwa. Peace out. That's a wrap, baby. Ah.